Good morning, good afternoon, good evening internet, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Economical Rides. So, it's finally here, my much delayed Meteor seat comparison. Today we will compare the Meteor 350 standard seat with the Royal Enfield official accessory touring seat. If you stay until the end of the video, you will also get to see Dr. Doolittle's Meteor Stellar mobile wine cellar mod and a much requested cameo appearance from Ruby, my fluffy companion. As many of you will know, my bike had the touring seat fitted from new. For this test I had to fit the standard seat, which previously I had never used before. Unfortunately, the day after I fitted the standard seat, three weeks of storms arrived and I was unable to go out on the bike at all, so I lost three weeks waiting for the weather to improve. When the weather was slightly better, I was able to do a couple of weeks normal riding with the standard seat and about two weeks ago, on my trip to the coast, I was finally able to do a longer ride, spending about four hours in the standard seat on that particular trip. So finally, after all this time, I feel as though I have enough information to give you all my seat comparison verdict. I know many of you are interested to know if the touring seat will be a worthwhile upgrade and I think the answer to that will depend upon a number of factors. In this video, I will show you the key differences between the two seats, my riding impressions of the two seats, and finally, I will give you my conclusions as to who should buy the touring seat and who should perhaps not. So, enough chit chat, let's get this comparison on the road. We will start the comparison by analysing the different dimensions of the two seats. I have prepared this graphic for you, all measurements were made as accurately as possible with the tools at my disposal and at the time I had both seats off of the bike. So here on the left we have the standard seat and on the right the touring seat. As we have already discovered in a previous video, with the touring seat you do lose some of the available seating area front to rear. In this graphic you can see that the standard seat pan offers about 360mm of theoretical seating length whereas the touring seat only offers 305mm. This is because the embroidered rear part of the seat cannot actually be used as part of the seating area. This rear part of the seat is extremely hard, as if made of wood, and unfortunately offers no give at all. As a result, you can only sit on the first 305mm of the touring seat. The loss of a theoretical 5.5cm of seat length towards the rear of the seat could obviously have implications for somebody who has longer legs and is already feeling slightly cramped when sitting as far back as possible on the standard seat. Interestingly, and this surprised me, because the touring seat has the backrest at its widest point, fitting the touring seat also reduces the maximum seat width within the usable seating area by about 25mm. You can see here that the standard seat is 350mm wide at its widest point within the usable seating area, whereas the touring seat is at its widest point in the unusable area, resulting in the widest usable part of the seat being only 325mm wide. So now let's turn our attention to the height of the two seats. I had been asked in the comments section previously whether fitting the touring seat will result in a change in seat height. This is a good question since you might reasonably expect the touring seat to feature more padding and thereby result in a slightly higher seat height within the seating area. My impression whilst riding was that there was no discernible difference in the seat height between the two seats and these measurements seem to back that up. Both seats seem to be about 70mm thick in the middle of the usable seating area. Therefore I think you will not notice any difference in seat height between the two seats. So now we know all about the dimensions of the two seats, let's talk about my impressions of the two seats in actual use. Initially when you get it, the touring seat is very hard. I actually found it borderline uncomfortable. Within a couple of days it seems to soften up a bit, or possibly your backside just gets used to it. But don't be surprised if the touring seat initially feels very hard when you first get it. The touring seat clearly uses a denser foam to offer more support and also contains webbing to distribute the load more evenly. A dense foam and a slightly hard feeling seat, whilst initially not feeling very plush, 
is actually what you need for long-term comfort. For day-long comfort, you need a seat which offers support and distributes the loads evenly, preventing pressure points which over time lead to discomfort. The Touring Seat does this very well. I would say that with the Touring Seat, mild discomfort starts to make itself apparent after about two hours. The advantage of the support the Touring Seat offers is that when this happens, all you have to do is lift your backside briefly from the seat, return it to the seat once more, possibly shuffle about a bit. This is usually enough to relieve any discomfort and there is no need to actually stop and get off the bike. The standard seat is initially very soft, plush and comfortable, more so than the touring seat. But this initial comfort also has a cost. The seat is comfortable initially because the softer foam padding is compressing and forming itself to your backside. Whilst this is initially very pleasant, it does result in uneven pressure points which over time lead to circulation problems and discomfort. The standard seat does offer the most comfort initially, but after about an hour the discomfort begins. After two hours no amount of shuffling about on the seat relieves the discomfort, and by that time a spell off the bike is in order. Admittedly this is just my own personal experience, all bodies and all backsides will be different, but this is my personal impression. It simply feels as though the initial comfort of the standard seat means that there is a lack of support to keep your backside comfortable for long periods in the saddle without a break. Let me start by saying that my major takeaway from this seat comparison was that both seats are extremely good. I actually really enjoyed my time with the standard seat. For 90% of my riding, it was more comfortable than my touring seat. It felt plusher initially and was comfortable enough for the length of ride I would normally do. Nonetheless, on my four hour ride to the coast and back, it became apparent that the touring seat does indeed have its advantages. So who should consider purchasing the touring seat for their Meteor 350? Well, clearly the clue is in the name. The touring seat will be more comfortable during long stints in the saddle. Anybody who frequently spends several hours at a time on the bike without stopping will appreciate the added support and all the comfort it provides. Any discomfort you may experience is easily alleviated and once you've done so it does take a while to come back. If I was intending to do long road trips on my Meteor, the touring seat would be my preferred option. You could also consider buying the touring seat if you just prefer the looks of it. I purchased the touring seat when I bought the bike simply because I liked the embroidered text and I felt it made the bike look slightly more premium. You will lose some initial comfort compared to the standard seat, but you will at least be riding in the knowledge that should the ride end up being longer than you anticipated, the touring seat should mean that you suffer little to no discomfort. So even if you don't intend to do long stints in the saddle, the touring seat is a good option for you if you prefer the looks and don't mind sacrificing some of the plushness of the standard seat for something firmer with more support. If your rides tend to be in the hour to hour and a half range and you find that the standard seat is comfortable enough, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the upgrade to the touring seat unless you are doing it purely for aesthetic reasons. The standard seat is a very comfortable seat and for the sort of rides most people do, one hour, one and a half hours on a weekend, it's perfectly fine. The touring seat is just an option which Royal Enfield made available to people who want to do longer rides, but the standard seat by any measure is a very good seat for most people. Finally, as mentioned, if you are already sitting all the way back on the standard seat and are already feeling slightly cramped, realistically the touring seat will probably see the base of your spine about one to one and a half inches further forwards on the seat base when you are sat back as far as possible. So in general, taller riders or riders with long legs may not be able to sit far enough back on the touring seat to feel comfortable. Before buying the touring seat, I would recommend that such riders should simulate the touring seat riding position first. With the bike on the center stand, sit on your standard seat where you would normally sit and then scoot a good inch forwards and put your feet on the pegs and your hands on the handlebars. This will probably be more or less the position into which the standard seat with its unusable area at the rear will push you. So having said all that, which of the two seats am I currently using? Well after this test, I did refit my touring seat, though purely for aesthetic reasons. 
For most of the riding I would normally do, the standard seat was perfectly comfortable and I would have been happy to continue with it in all honesty. I was really surprised, having never used it before, by just how good the standard seat is. As a factory fit motorcycle seat, it must be one of the most comfortable ones I've ever used. There really is no need for anybody to buy the touring seat, although those who intend to do long trips with the Meteor will undoubtedly find it beneficial. For the rest of us it just comes down to aesthetic preference and possibly body shape. With this seat comparison I have tried to cover the major aspects which I think may be relevant to anybody considering purchasing the touring seat. It's not unlikely however that I might have forgotten something which may be important to certain people. Should this be the case, please feel free to pose any further questions you may have in the comments section of this video and I will answer your questions as accurately as I can. I'm sure too that other members of the economical rights community will be happy to help you. And now, as promised, it's time for our second ever Other Bods Mod segment, this time featuring Dr. Doolittle's Meteor Stellar Wine Cellar Mod. Other Bods Mods, Other Bods Mods, Some of you bods are clever sods, Other Bods Mods. Other bot mod. Let's pay respect to some other bot mods. Yeah. Respect. Come on, fit you bastard. In today's other bots mods, we will be looking at the Meteor Stella of channel subscriber Dr. Doolittle. Dr. Doolittle has made a couple of really interesting mods to his Meteor, which I will show you here but the net result is that I always refer to his Meteor as the Party Meteor, for reasons which will become apparent. So the first mod I'm going to show you is the rack, which Dr. Doolittle fitted in place of the pillion seat. Now this rack, I believe, was bought off eBay. I will put links to the items I have links for in the video description, but apparently the fit wasn't to his satisfaction, so it ended up being modified and uh, fortunately he has somebody who can do some welding for him. So this is the modified rack fitted to his Stella. And as you can see here, due to the way the seat fits the Meteor, the whole um, rear subframe design, unfortunately you can still see the wiring to the rear lights. But that seems to be a hard problem to solve at the moment if you remove the rear pillion seat on a Meteor. And now we move on to the next mod, Dr. Doolittle made to his Meteor and it's quite a complicated mod to do. I don't think many people would be up for doing it. But Dr. Doolittle, like myself, he wasn't a great fan of the lopsided Royal Enfield factory luggage option, which basically only gives you a pannier for one side. So he went and did something quite creative. He bought two sets of this pannier with mounting rails, fitted one on the correct side and the other side, the uh, mounting rails were modified to be able to fit the other pannier on the left hand side. The only downside to this is of course the panniers open in slightly different directions now. One opens towards the rear and the other one opens towards the front. But at least now he has a symmetrical factory luggage option. And I agree really, I, I've never been a fan of these asymmetrical luggage solutions. I always think the bike looks a bit odd if you just have a pannier on one side, particularly from the front and the rear. So I can understand his motivation for doing this conversion, but obviously it was quite a lot of work. There was a lot of cutting and welding involved to get the um, mounting frames to fit on the other side. And also the case on the other side needed a few holes drilling in it to be able to mount it the other way around. So it was quite a complex mod, but the advantage of it is, and here it comes now, he actually has a mobile wine cellar. Check this out. So this is why I now call Dr. Doolittle's Stella the party meteor. You can pop around any time, DD. Just make sure you bring the wine cellar with you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's uh, quite a complex mod. Um, very well done, I think, and um, I think it's a great shame that Royal Enfield don't offer the option of a left-hand sided and right-hand sided pannier with mounting kit, because then you could have it either side, 
or if you're a bit OCD and you really want to keep the symmetry of the bike you could at least order one of each kit and have a left and right hand pannier. I don't know whether Royal Enfield will ever consider doing this but I've really never been a fan of these one-sided panniers. Um, I know Triumph started doing it a while ago with the twins and lots of other manufacturers do it. It seems to be in vogue at the moment but I'm not a great fan of it and obviously Dr. Doolittle wasn't either so this was his uh, complicated but excellent solution. As you may have seen on his registration plate Dr. Doolittle is actually in the Isle of Man and as you can see here he has a nice sticker on his tank to commemorate that fact and actually for a while he was the outright lap record holder on the uh, TT road course unfortunately um, recently a bunch of journos doing a 2021 superbike shootout test managed to knock him off his perch but I do believe he still currently holds the record for a Meteor 350 around the TT course. So congrats to you, Dr. Doolittle. Keep up the good work. No, okay, that's not quite strictly true, but yeah, we do joke about his TT record attempts. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing the mods that Dr. Doolittle has made to his Red Stella. If you have any questions about the mods he's made, I'm sure he would be happy to answer them in the comments section. I will link to the parts he has ordered to make this mod possible in the video description. Thank you Dr. Doolittle for sending me the pictures and letting me present your bike in this other bods mod segment. I do have a couple of other bikes to feature in future other bods mod segments but if you would like your mods to be featured on the channel please get in touch with me possibly via my Instagram account which is simply economical rides and if you can send me some images I'm sure I can feature your bike in a future video. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing Dr. Doolittle's mods. I've had a request actually that Ruby should feature in the next video. So here's a little clip of Ruby I made especially for you. Ruby, would you like to come and say hello to the internet people? Good girl, yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that, that's so good, hello. Do you deserve a treat? <laughs> you are allowed to chew it, you, know. <laughs> you crazy girl. Say goodbye. Bye bye. Thank you, Ruby. You are a superstar. I hope you enjoyed this video. So now you've seen my extensive, exhaustive seat comparison video. You've also seen Dr. Doolittle's Red Stella, heavily modified, with a nice symmetrical luggage option. You've also seen a brief cameo from my dog Ruby. So hopefully there was something in this video for everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would encourage you to do so. I try to do at least one video per week. Sometimes it's just me riding about, chatting. Sometimes it's actually something informative. Well, I hope it is anyway. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. If you really appreciate the time and effort I put into my videos, you now have the option to buy me a coffee. There is a link in the video description. Thank you so much for dropping by my channel and watching this video. I hope to see you back here soon. Bye bye.